friends, fellow seekers of the supernatural. I'll be your guide through the mysterious realm. In each episode, we'll unravel spine-tingling tales, explore haunted locations, and delve into the inexplicable. Brace yourselves for encounters with restless spirits, cryptids, and things that defy logic. So dim the lights, grab your sage, and join us as we peer into the darkness. Because the truth is stranger than fiction. Subscribe now and remember, the paranormal is among us. Hey everybody. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Welcome to... Paranormal Among Us on this Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Krista, how are you doing today? I'm great. I am doing good. Had a good day today. Good. good how are day. you? Good. Very good. Very good. You know, St. Louis um, today is a very, very busy town. They say over 100,000 people are going to be down there. We had the Cardinals this afternoon playing. We have the Battle Hawks and the uh, XFL. There's that uh, thing. <laughs> With thumbs up. Um, and then uh, St. Louis City is uh, playing their uh, uh, MLS game tonight. So yeah. busy uh, night downtown. I think, I think people are in town, too, for the Eclipse. Yes. And then uh, after tonight, they'll probably head down to, um, to Brandy down there and uh, see the totality of it. Yeah. So. Fun, fun. What are you doing for it? Are you going to be watching it? I will be at work. I have my glasses, and I will be going outside uh was it like one one thirty or something like I'm that i'm not sure i have to google that for our time yeah i think it was i think it's around one i thought i saw 138 okay um, but uh but yeah i'll be outside what are you gonna do same be at work take a long lunch or be like hey i'm taking taking 15 minutes i'll be back <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean I, they say it's a once in a lifetime but didn't we had this n- few not years ago. ago yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, hey, we have a great show tonight. Uh, Shane Michael Crisp is here from the um, West Coast Dogman Project. Project. Mm-hmm. I talk. Um, so he'll be here joining us in just a few minutes. He's laughing at me backstage. Um, but first, we have a couple of things that I want to uh, remind you guys. Um, if you're looking for any kind of Paranormal Among Us merchandise, maybe a shirt, maybe a pillow. Um, head on over to Purple Penguins Crafts and Creations. I think that's the website name. I can't remember. It's coming up here soon. Uh, but they are doing official um, Crafts and Creations. There it is. Official uh, uh, Paranormal Among Us merchandise. Also, we are going to be at Ashmore in Ashmore, Illinois, uh, May 18th through the 19th, into the 19th. Uh, 11 30 a.m. on the 18th we will be ending around 2 a.m. on the 19th mm-hmm. uh, 85 dollars for the ticket that includes the pizza dinner uh guest daytime guest speaker and the overnight ghost hunt yep and we'll be doing it's not only ghost hunting too hopefully the skies will be clear and we're gonna go outside and do some sky watching too if, oh that'll be fun you no know, want to do that as well so yeah it'll be that'll fun, be fun. So you see uh, Robin Terry will be there, Letitia Nunley, uh, Jessica Potter will be there, uh, Rachel Marie, Josh Hurd, me, and Blondes and the Booze. So it will be a fun night. Um, and, taking... and After Dark Paranormal, they are also uh, co-hosting. After Dark Paranormal. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a fun night. Uh, tickets through Eventbrite under Blondes and Booze. So mm-hmm. lots and lots of fun stuff coming up. Um, so, all right. Let's get, uh, let's get Shane out here. Sounds good. Hey, Shane, how you doing? Hey, Paul. Hey, Krista. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. How are you? Doing good. Doing, doing good. great. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm stoked. Hey, hey, no problem. And, and you were on uh, Krista's show Thursday night on the Blondes mm-hmm. and the Booze. Had a good di- time with them and um, Josh. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a fun show. Um <laughs> more tonight more tonight so thank you for taking your time and uh coming in tonight mm-hmm. my pleasure yep yep and just so everybody knows shane's lagging just a little bit but it's okay mm-hmm. just we'll a little make bit. this work i apologize everyone <laughs> you're good <laughs> bear with me <laughs> okay. you know you know you guys you guys mentioned it on your show krista the other night that 
strange things are happening this week with the eclipse and you yes. know maybe maybe this is part of it the the internet has gone wonko could be yeah very so. well be could very well be yeah who knows yeah so shane um west coast uh dog man project let's let's start off uh talking about that how did you get that started and how did you get into so that how and, and dog man stuff yeah, so how it all started was that I'd never ever heard of Dogman. A coworker of mine was listening to Vic Cundiff's Dogman Encounters, and I laughed at the name and said, you know, Dogman don't exist. Werewolves aren't real. It's all Hollywood. He's like, no, listen to these encounters. So started listening to a few of them, and then I started getting intrigued by it. I'm like, I don't know if these guys are in it for five minutes of fame, or they're just looking to hoax something else, like Bigfoot or something. They just this. It's always been a hoax, it seems like. Someone's trying to do something but then i started diving more and more into it and started reading on the history of it and trying to look for photos but all you get are these red circle photos and photos are subjective so i'm like well i don't know but i came across paul chafin and with the kentucky dog man project his own personal facebook group and i started seeing some really good stuff in his group and i was like i that's what i want to do i want to get out look for these things but out here on the west so i started up the california dog man Pro project just kind of Kind of out of respect for him and then i started googling it and i came across the north american dogman project and i was like wait there's already a you know name name my my facebook group so i started th sitting there brainstorming and i was like hey west coast how cool would that be i'm out here in california i'm literally an hour and a half two hours away from the ocean so hey let's start mm -hmm. it up and then that's when i created it in december of 2021 and we're up to about, I think, 1,700 members now. And Chris wow. is one of the admins, and she helps. She does such an amazing mm -hmm. job with – she runs so many Facebook groups. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> but it, it's just – she helps me, and so does Brandy, along with another team of you know, great – Well, and you help us too, though, Chris. And you help us with blondes and booze as well, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's – I just – you know, friends helping friends. And that's what I think this community mm -hmm. is about, is helping each other. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in the paranormal aspect or the cryptid aspect, it's mm -hmm. we're all in this for one thing and to learn and find answers. So yeah, I, and then after that, I just we there's a little a team, just really my wife and I. But I've met so many incredible pe people just in California that are mm -hmm. cryptid investigators that want to tag along when we do. So we've gone out, we've traveled up and down California, going to these certain areas where they've had dogmen sightings or encounters and checking it out mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and right now we're kind of coming back from a hiatus belly wolf ape to see if it is a cryptid or if it's just you know a hoax <laughs> prove to disprove right yeah. <laughs> and you know i i know the, the the great northwest up there that's you know rich with uh bigfoot um encounters and stuff are there, are there I, I'm, like I'm pretty assuming... bad guys i'm sorry no, you're fine. You're fine. It's it's a little bit, you know, but it's all right. We we'll get through it. Um, but you know the uh, Bigfoot up in uh, Oregon, okay. up in the Great Northwest, up that way. Um, a lot of dogmen in the same area too. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you might want to call him, Paul, and put him on speakerphone. Yeah. Phone. yeah. He can still stay, keep his picture up there, and then yeah. just turn off his mic and then call yeah. him. Can you hear us, Shane? Okay. Let's see here. Hang on a second. We are. And then just put him on show. speakerphone and put the put it right by your uh, your microphone, and we should all be able to hear him. We've had to do that several times to different guests on our show, so. Hey, hey there. Hey, what's up, you guys? Sorry about that. My internet is. My, wi my internet is. It's just, my Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's, I'm bad, right it's, just, yeah, it's bad right now. So, my apologies. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we figured this might be a little bit easier to um, to hear you. Yeah. So, I forgot what the question was. Oh, he can I mean, put his picture back up though, if he wants to. If you want to turn your camera back on, you can. We'll just keep you muted, and uh, so everybody can see you. If you can. <laughs> huh. 
Wow. Maybe it's just your internet connection in general. So maybe the dog man just chewed through your internet cables. I'm assuming so. <laughs> <laughs> Three letter agency. I, I, I don't know what they're doing. I was talking dog tonight. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you are. There you are. All right. Okay. All right. So, I mean, like I, like I said before, up in uh, the Great Northwest is a big, big, Bigfoot country. Same thing with Dogman out there? Yes. I don't know. Because, I mean, the whole Northwest is all Bigfoot, is where, you know, you got Washington, Oregon, mm -hmm. the Redwood National Forest. It's just filled with Bigfoot. But there's been a lot of the recent encounters, I'd say within the last 20 years, coming out of, you know, the West Coast area, Northwest of Dogman sightings. Right. And it seems like more people are coming forward and wanting to share. And it's like by being a part of the NADP, it's the world's largest Dogman organization. Being a part of that, it's what we're trying to do is, you know, get these people out there and you know, check out their sightings and then take what they their encounter and, and put it on an archive and kind of map it out to see is it one dogman is a group of them mm -hmm. or is it a different species of dogmen that are just, you know, living amongst us and the Sasquatch. Yeah. I see a couple of Facebook users in the chat. Um we appreciate you watching on, on Facebook, but if you want to come over to the chat so we can see who you are, come over to YouTube so we can see who you are. Yep. We can see your names. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm putting Shane's. I'm going to drop Shane's channel in the chat here real quick. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So what are, how do you, um, how do you get stories? Do, do people do send them in to you from their encounters or, or how does that, that work? Yeah. So normally what happens is what we, at West Coast, it's really far and in between because there's not a lot of newer encounters. It seems like we're getting old people coming forward, but their encounter happened 5, 10, 15 years ago, and they want to sit, you know, get it out there so other people can you know read their stuff. A lot of the ones that we do have are on the NAEP archive site. So that's what, you know, we, we try to use those. And then kind of piggy off of uh, – certain other like platforms like podcasts that have their encounters and we'll go like I, there's a couple i've actually got off of big kind of space or a podcast and went and checked out the areas to see could there be a dog in here and it's like you just go to check out these areas and it's like this yeah there could definitely be something here housing a dog man or a, a, a clan of these things or a group or a pack of these dog men i mean it's it's definitely really very eerie feeling when you get go to these certain locations yeah so is there any uh, any good stories that uh, or encounters that you can talk about? Can you hear me? Are there any uh, good encounters that you could talk about, Shane? Yeah, so actually a buddy of mine sent me one up in uh, Alaska. You wouldn't think that there would be dogmen in Alaska, mm -hmm. but there's been a handful of reports that have been coming in this one encounter my buddy did send me, which I did confirm, was actually on the NADP website. And I, I went and I checked it out the other day when he sent it to me. He's like, hey, check out this. Because he's part of the NADP as well. So I went and I checked it out. And I'm like, wow, we actually do have one encounter up in Alaska. The encounter happened actually in 1998. So what was happening was a gentleman was driving home. Or it might have been a lady. I can't. They didn't describe their gender, but they were driving at two o'clock in the morning. It was four days before Halloween and they have to commute a hundred miles each way to work. And it's in between uh, Anchorage, Alaska, I believe I might be butchering the two towns and it's in the Manuska Valley area, but there's the gentleman's driving or the, the individual is driving at two o'clock in the morning and about 20 minutes miles from home, he's going around a curve and it's only a two way freeway. And you know, it's a lot of, bends and twists and it, it's just dense forest so he's just driving and what he thinks is a moose or an elk come walking out into the middle of the street it when he starts getting closer his headlights pick it up he's driving in a 1982 subaru so i mean he's pretty low to the ground but he looks up and it's like is that a bear and as he's he's going about 20 miles around the bend and he started to slow down pressing on his brake well all of a sudden this thing looked like a bear but it was standing on two legs and he's like whoa whoa, whoa. it had the canine like face said it had the german shepherd type head and it's just like 
was jet black. His headlights literally shot through it, and it was like the fur on this thing was absorbing it. So he was like, "What am I doing?" So he, he said that he was he's five foot four, but he would look or the individual looked up and said this creature was roughly seven eight feet tall, and then it just stood at him. But when he got a real good detail on the body, was it had the human like torso and it had like a chiseled you know, chest but it had the dog style legs that degenerate leg structure and then he said he gassed it and took it or the individuals i keep saying he i don't know <laughs> my apologies but the individual gunned it drove as fast as they could at home and then for over 20 years avoided going down that road and commuting he would go about 25 to 30 miles outside of traveling that stretch of road to get home and he said he would only go on it or the individual said they would only go on it when he was or when they were with other people or during the daylight they wouldn't drive it at night so that one was pretty intriguing to me and this was came in 1998 so we're talking wow. over 20 24 25 years ago mm -hmm. yeah that's crazy what do you think about the um and i don't know you might have to repeat this paul if he can't hear me but what do you think about Shane, about these creatures? People have these encounters and then they um, follow them home and torment them at home. Yes. So that, that's another weird thing, kind of like the Sasquatch. They, people mm -hmm. see these things and they get that weird feeling that they think follow them home and they're looking into their windows and stuff and they're freaking these poor individuals out. I saw a wolf on two legs looking at in my window it's mm -hmm. i think they just like to observe us i honestly you you hear about you, we don't have a whole lot of reports other than like, let's just say the lbl of the massacre site but these things i don't really think they go out of their way to harm us but when you have a run-in with them they just use their presence as a scare factor when especially when they stand up on two legs because people have described hearing the bones pop into place like when they stand up and it's like whoa that's a giant wolf but then it's walking on two legs and then people are so scared they run out of the area they literally will piss themselves or you know they right. hide out of there so uh the ones that i'm thinking when they followed them home i think they're just observing the people but there's got to be something i think almost a paranormal aspect to it that these People are able to see these things, but maybe it's something that they're catching on that's drawing them to it. Just like the Sasquatch. I don't know. It's just a theory, but I do believe that there's something that's attracting the human or the, the dogmen or Sasquatch to these humans. Mm -hmm. So and it could be food, too. You know, they could probably be hungry and say, hey, this person's got some food. You know, that's why I don't ever preach to people that you should gift. I'm not one of those that where I gift you know the sasquatch or the dogman people do hey that's what they do i think that's personally when you gift you're, you're hurting other people down the road that could possibly be attacked because yep. you gift them and then one day you don't gift them there's a hiker on a trail that walks right by this dogman or this sasquatch and mm -hmm. they're like hey there's no food and they attack that person well then that person ends up being another 411 case right yeah well, krista can you hear everything okay here, Shane coming through. Okay, okay. Um, so I, I think I figured out. I had all the sound coming through my headphones, um, and I apologize. I can't tell if I'm yelling or not. Um, so I had all. I took the headphones off, and I got your voice coming through the uh, speakers on my computer. So if you have a question, I have to move the phone. So feel free to ask. I mean, <laughs> so. Um, Oh, I thought you were going to say something. I'm sorry. <laughs> so did, I, I... <laughs> did you did you think of something and lose it? I had a brain fart. Yeah. yeah. I hate those, man. It sucks yeah. getting old. I'm telling you, it sucks getting old. I can <laughs> go on and on about dog man. So, so let me ask you, Shane. Do you have any reports of people? Um, I know you've you've said this before. This is something I learned from you that um, there isn't any reported sites of dog men in Hawaii. Is that true? Of, we actually have a an ADP Hawaii chapter, mm -hmm. but no reports. The only thing that's coming out of Hawaii is the legend and the folklore of the Kaupe. The Kaupe is almost like a skinwalker. You have to become mm -hmm. a, a, this Kaupe. You have to do something so sinister as almost kill one of your family members or somebody that you truly love to become mm -hmm. this bipedal like werewolf in the Hawaiian lore. So it's pretty right. tricky. When you look at just the history of by upright canids from almost every culture as 
stories or wars or reports like the sign of syphilis. But I mean, that's just a, just a vast amount of what these people are seeing, mm-hmm. you know, through throughout our history. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's scary stuff, too. I got to tell you, like a dog man is something that I don't want to see. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't mind seeing a, a a Bigfoot from a distance, but yeah, Dogman, no, I'm I'm good. I've I've seen enough pictures and heard enough stories that you know I'm good. I'll 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 wait for somebody to to show me a picture of it. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent on that. I, I mean, I want to see one just to prove to myself that hey, these things are really out there. I do believe they're out there. I don't mm-hmm. believe everything you hear is you know. Oh, I, I do believe. It. All the pictures, it's hard. Like I said, photos are so subjective. When you got 20 red circles in one photo, it's hard for me to take serious. But there's some legit photos out there that I've seen that made me a believer because I wasn't mm-hmm. a skeptic at first myself. But, you know, when people say they see these things, this, the encounter is so brief, it, whether it's 30 seconds to two minutes. I mean, if it's a two minute encounter, it feels like ages, according to some of these reports. So. Right. Now, when you when people send you pictures of big of um, dog man or anything really for that matter, mm-hmm. how much do you go in, in and look to see if it has been doctored, and what do you how do you do that? It's a, yeah, that's another one. I don't have the tools on my phone to actually kind of tell if it's been altered. I mean, I kind of like Brian Tremblay. I think you know he really taught me what to look for on certain things if it's been altered. And mm-hmm. like if someone had cropped out an image and then put it over here but you can tell it's almost been altered there's one um photo where it's actually from a video game but it's this werewolf eating on a body and then they said it was a trail cam probably seen it if you google online mm-hmm. dog man or werewolf that it'll pop up and you'll, you see the torso on the ground and then the dog man's eyes are super bright and it's got blood around its mouth well that's something i was like well that looked real now it's an illustration from a video game so yeah. it's like you really have to just kind of and then what we live in the technology age right now with ai being so good that these ai photos are looking almost real so you almost have to just prove the disprove that i'd say 95 percent of the stuff out there is false honestly i have to be a skeptic on it because we don't know I, one thing i actually learned from a good buddy was that you know you can have the clearest photo of a dog man holding a science thing on a dog man but there's still going to be skeptics and critics that are going to attack the photo so really that's why i yeah. say you know unless we get a video document like the patterson gimlin film then i think we can we jump we'd be jumping a huge hurdle in the dog man community right no i agree with you uh, wholeheartedly and hopefully yeah. we get something like that you know yeah, I really hope we do too. And that's what, you know, I'm trying to do out here out in California is mm-hmm. to try to look for, you know, and try to get that million dollar shot, even though I wouldn't carry make a million dollars off of it. I mean, if you say, hey, I'm going to sell it for a million dollars. You would, yeah, you take the money, but at the same time, it's like, well, I'm not in it to make money, but I just want to prove to this and show people, hey, this is the video I got. I'm telling you the honest truth. I'll take a lie detector test, but this is right. what I got. We want to get that evidence so we can, you, know, you look at the Patterson Gimlin film, it's so heavily analyzed getting to the day 50 years later. So that's what I would like to get something for the, you know, the dog man community. So yeah. people can say, hey, look at that thing. And I've seen some legit photos to where you're just like, that's something. But then you have to start weeding out, is it a raccoon or is it, you know, from a distance, is it a bear? Right. So, but Nick Valente taught me the one word that, I, the one saying that, that sticks to me and that is prove to disprove. Mm-hmm. What, what are your thoughts about the Patterson Gimlin? Do you believe it's, it's legit? Oh, a hundred percent. I believe it's legit. I, I think uh, MK Davis broke. It has the best digitally enhanced photo of that, where you can see the the curvature of the breast, the, the glutes on it. I mean, the, the, the details in the face is just, wow. I, it, to me, mm-hmm. I don't see how you can fake that. In 1967 or 1968, whenever the Patterson Gimlin film came out, I know it was the late 60s, but for that time Mm -hmm. in the props that they would maybe add, I just, it's so hard when they recreated it. You go on YouTube and you go look up Thinkerson, is it Thinkersunker, I think his name is, but he's got, you know, 100,000 subscribers and he breaks down how this creature is walking and there's no human that can physically walk like Mm -hmm. that. It's it's mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that. However, I have heard um, instances where um, that the Patterson Gimlin, like it could be fake only because like, I guess uh, uh, those two guys, they were kind of like con artists and kind of, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, kind of 
not so nice back then, you know, and, and yeah. so, you know, and they were out looking for Bigfoot. That was their, their, their motive. So, I mean, I, I definitely, I believe it's legit too. I really do. And then people, you know, you hear them talk about like those kind of things. And it's like, Oh, well, you know, kind of puts a doubt in your head. That's why I was just wondering how you thought about it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you hundred percent on that. I do believe that this thing is, 100 percent legit i think there's a couple other photos and videos out there i don't know i, I mean i'm a big sasquatch person but i'm a, more of a dog man researcher mm -hmm. investigator mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it but it's just there's a few legit photos of a sasquatch out there that says hey how can you think that this is a hoax or a fake when you look at the native history talking about it the chiatonga the janosqua mm -hmm. I mean, they're all somehow related but it's in their history and they were the first people on this continent right. Right. You know, they have say, hey, you're crazy. You didn't believe that. They even talked about my kids. It's crazy, you know? Right. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. What What got you into wanting to um, research Dogman? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's just one of those that just that it was so fascinating. I've always loved yeah. like, the werewolf lore, but I always thought it was fake. Silver Bullet, really, as a little kid, mm -hmm. I was only like three years old when I watch it for the very first time yeah my mom was crazy for letting your kid watch a scary movie but my mom's you know had us watch night of the living dead as far as i can remember the original one <laughs> your, mom, your mom sounds like me i'm that mom too <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mom had me walking around yelling barbara they're coming for you <laughs> I mean, it's been something that's always been trenched in my head and just thinking of an upright canid actually existing, I had to just say, oh, it's, you know, you have to listen to what you, other people say, oh, it's fake, it's Hollywood, werewolves are just, you know, a legend. And, but then they start thinking, you, you know, you hear about it, the dog man, and that's what got me really interested into it, thinking, okay, I know my friends and my family laugh at me because they're like, oh, you believe in, you know, <laughs> dog man and just the name itself is fast you know they laugh at go get your tinfoil well hey i i want to look into something that's not supposed to exist but you know a lot of people are coming forward explaining the same exact thing almost describing it detail for detail the long nails the upright posture the seven foot you know german shepherd looking head it's just, mm -hmm. I, don't, I believe there's too many of these encounters to say that this thing is fake. People are obviously seeing something. Mm -hmm. So that's what gets me all interested into it and diving headfirst into it. I mean, I've only been doing it for about two and a half, maybe three years, but it's, it's still, it's a, every day I wake up, I listen to or see something dog. Now I'm looking something up online or listening to an encounter because it's, it's so fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, you, you, uh, now I had a brain fart. <laughs> wow it's a st louis thing maybe <laughs> something man maybe something in the air today yeah do you do you think the these dogmen are any relation to bigfoot or any or spiritual i'm not spiritual um uh what am i trying to say uh flesh and blood or what do you what do you think they are and, and where where do they go where do they hide out to this because we don't have any physical evidence you have some people that are in the flesh and blood camp to say no this is a you know i shot it it bled and it's like okay well that's i can understand where they come from when they think oh it's flesh and blood but then you start seeing that there's a more, a, more of a paranormal aspect to these things people describing portals uh then that's when you start jumping down other rabbit holes and you start seeing that these things are supposedly protectors of grave sites when you go to a native burial ground a lot of it, these dogmen encounters are seen around native burial sites or graveyards cemeteries and then we start jumping down another rabbit hole you know you start looking at mm -hmm. like anubis he was the guardian of you know the underworld they are the afterlife or I, I might be butchering that but at least dog headed creatures it's like they use them to protect these areas and then when they, you see them there's that's the paranormal aspect to it so me personally are these things interdimensional i do keep an open mind to that because we don't see them where they disappear when you see them the alleged track of a dog man there's one or two and then it just disappears kind of like a sasquatch mm -hmm. are these things interdimensional are they in the earth are they living in the cave systems one fascinating thing I do see is that the 411 matches up almost identically to the underground cave system. So are these things living here? But I, I, there's so many different rabbit holes, Paul, we can jump down to say, hey, is this flesh and blood or is this interdimensional? I find it real fascinating that Nick Valente of the International Dogman Project did a six-month study. And this actually went up 
a cent or two. I think another 40 or 50 reports came in, so it made the number jump up. But 94% of dog man encounters that he's you know collected over a six month span had a UFO or UAP you know, paranormal like mm -hmm. aspect to it. They saw the dog man and then all of a sudden they looked into the sky, you know, with when it ran off into the tree line and then there's a UFO or a UAP, a bright light. So mm -hmm. it's really intriguing to where are these things getting dropped off by the greys or another extraterrestrial species? Or, you know, I when they literally just disappear, they, they say they just the thing just went into the thin air and it just disappeared. Um, I have a couple of different theories on that. I do believe when they're here longer, eating on our carcass, you know, or eating on the carcasses of deer, that they're flesh and blood. But I believe yeah. that the longer they are here, that's when they're becoming more, I, I don't know if the terminology, if it's metaphysical, that they're becoming more flesh and blood. You know, does that make any sense? Kind yeah. of the longer you're here, you're not in that interdimensional realm anymore. Right. So, I believe that you have to eat or something to stay that way almost. But yeah, I mean, like I said, there's so many different theories on that to say, is it flesh and blood or is it interdimensional? I keep an open mind at the end of the day because we don't have any evidence, real little, I would say. So, mm -hmm. or, or could there be portals in the forest? And, and this is how these creatures are, are, are coming and going into whatever dimension they go to. I mean, that could be. I, yeah, I definitely, if, I don't know if anyone in the chat or if you, both have listened. Martin Groves was on the confessionals last night and they were talking about portals and the LBL and the dog man. So it's definitely, I didn't listen to the whole bit. I only got like 20 minutes of it, but he was talking about how, you know, portals. If you ever check out his book, I think it's the beast of uh, the LBL. He came out with it last year. Very yeah. intriguing. Or if you ever never listened to Martin Groves encounter, I mean, the dude's retired law enforcement and just, when you listen to his encounter, Paul, I don't know if you ever heard it. I know hmm. Chris is really good friends with Martin, uh, but it's just it, you're, the hairs on your arm to stand up. It's yeah, it, hmm. it's, it's, to me, it's one of the best encounters I've heard. And it's coming out of the LDL too, which is another hot, it's a huge hot spot. I know Krista and Brandy both been out there, you know, hmm. and they checked it yeah. out. And they, you've gotten a weird feeling, right? When you were out there with Barton and Leticia. Oh yeah, we, that's kind of our go-to place. It has been here lately, but. Uh, yeah, you just get on the on the grounds and like the whole vibe changes. It's just it's just a weird weird place. Mm -hmm. exactly. And it's it's what's really weird is like it's it's you know very touristy in the summertime during the day. And man, when it the sun goes down, it takes on a whole different ambiance. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's something I definitely want to check out. That's on the top of my bucket list is to go out there and just investigate, meet up with a group of friends, and just go check out the area. Maybe you yeah. might have, I Joe and Jesse Doyle have some of the best legit, you know, evidence of, you know, the dog man out there. They've done experiments out there. And it seems like they're going out every other weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think they're all going to the LBL. I mean, they have been to the LBL, but they did. There's some other places around their place. I think they've been going to, but they are getting some good stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they have gotten some good stuff out at the LBL for sure. Yeah. yeah. I know another one that goes out there a lot. Well, you know, Bart goes out there a lot and a, a, a war criminal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. War criminal was listening. Howdy. Yeah. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah. If you can ever make a get out here, Shane, you you come on to the LBO. We'll we'll take you to the right places for sure. I, I appreciate it. I, I definitely will hit you up on that. I don't know if it'll be. Soon, but definitely down the road, I definitely want to get out there. And I yeah. still, I have to make part in memory the promise of becoming the wolf, the brotherhood of the wolf. You know, I got to join that. So, for sure, for sure, yeah, it's it's uh it's quite an eerie place, and you know, and that's where I actually started hearing about Dogman at first too. You know, was uh, stories coming out of the LBL, and and uh, it, it was the the 1982 killing, you know, massacre that I had heard about first. I'm like, there is no way, you know, like whatever and then like you said you know people like martin and there's several others out there too you know uh, mark maycheck is another one that has some pretty good encounter stories but uh uh you know you you just hear all these and not everybody's lying i agree not everyone's lying i mean if you want to take them for face value hey, go ahead but if you don't mm -hmm. that's where you're gonna have skeptics but just 
analyzing and listening to their stories, especially like Martin Groves, it, I don't believe that the man is lying or would tell a, a lie out of his body that he waited till after he retired so he wouldn't be crucified, you know, in his line of law enforcement and, you know, have to, you know, retire early because it's, oh, look at Martin's crazy because he sees werewolves out in the LBL. No, he waited till after he retired to explain what he'd seen back in, I believe it was 93 or 94. So I do believe LBL is a definitely hot spot for the yeah. dog man. Just like I think, you know, Michigan and Canada, I just don't believe a lot of people are coming forward with their, you know, encounters just because they don't want to get crucified themselves, yeah. you know, or but they come out anonymously or they come out years later when they're ready to talk about it. But those are two areas I believe are hot spots. Absolutely. Justin Boyd says, I grew up in Trigg County in the LBL and there's a lot of weirdness around that area. You're not kidding, Justin. It's, it's crazy, crazy out there. And you know, you're speaking of Martin Groves and Bart, they're actually out there this weekend. There's some sort of meet and greet, I think going on out there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So that's something I'd love to do with like everyone from, you know, you guys, Blondes and Blues, Paul, like just have a big old powwow. Like, like how Josh got the dog game conference mm -hmm. out there in, was it Paris, yeah. Tennessee? But I mean, just to have like a big LBL camp out for like a week, you know, and just go do little mm -hmm. investigations at night. I think that'd be so cool. But, yeah. yeah. We'd probably just off the dog game more. <laughs> Maybe we could all plan some for like a couple of years out and that gives people plenty of time to save and, you know, the whole night. Yeah. Exactly. Next summer, maybe that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Justin was supposed to be there right now, but his baby babysitter was a no show. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the last time he uses that babysitter. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you can you know, check out the profiles and if they're legit or not. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy stuff, man. Yeah. So Justin had a, a, another question. How extensive is some of the data on your on your site? I mean, did they have compilation of locations, traits, behaviors? Um, yeah. So I mean, the NADP website. We're trying. We, since I rejoined it, I did take a step down after uh, a while. It's just becoming too much. And then I, I got back into it. I hit up Jody and said, "Hey, there's something going on. I'd like to join back, even as a field investigator." He's like, "Well, you were always a field investigator, but..." How about region one director spot? So I was like, okay, cool. I, I can work the West anyways, <laughs> you know, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So I joined back in and we're starting to slowly get it. Uh, my buddy, Kim Thibodeau, I'm pretty sure Chris, I think you've interviewed him, I think once or twice, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Thibodeau? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think he was on uh, uh, Texas front porch. Brandy did. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's kind of been tasked with being our tech guy and we're trying to get the website up today because i know the inbox is full of encounters but if you go to the website that we we have a chart that breaks down the different sizes of dog men with the different species but you go to the encounter section and this is where it's open to the public if you want to check out any archives or you can check out our archives for free just zoom in on the map and these maps pinpoint exactly where these locations were allegedly happened and it can go back all the way from, you know, 1887. I think the Wexford County dog band report is actually on the Michigan map. But you can go, you know, zoom out to Alaska or you can go down to Florida. But if you look at the dog band encounters map, the hotspots are all along the East Coast and the Midwest. You see there's so many red dots. But then you go up towards like Montana, there's only two. But, you know, that well, those were only encounters that were sent to Jody and the NAPP. So mm -hmm. that's not just taking any one that you find online and just tasking on there. But that's what we're trying to do is try to update it with up-to-date encounters. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a great website to uh, go to. I'll see if I can find it and post that in the link, too, here. I'll do that real quick. Okay. The website? Yeah, for, for uh, NADP. Okay. Yeah. And if anyone ever wants to join the NADP, all you have to do is you can reach out to me or you can reach out to one of our regional directors. And if you want to become a field investigator, you just fill out the paperwork. Uh, that's, the paperwork is really just to protect, you know, the organization and Jody from, you know, just sending someone out there that's not trained and, you know, gets eaten or they, you know, it's decide eaten. to, <laughs> yeah, get eaten or, you know, <laughs> happen or they destruct, you know, destruct, you know, somebody's property. I mean, it's just to protect us on that. But then after we get the paperwork back, we send it to Jody and then what, as a regional director or a state rep, they'll send you the field manual. The field manual took Jody, I don't know, a good portion, like six months or almost to a year to write. It's like 300 pages, but it breaks down like the history of how the NADP started. And then Dogman, uh, you know, certain things to look out for 
it's just, it's just a whole field manual. It's one of the kind. I don't, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's the uh, North American Dogman Project.com. Check that out, like it, and uh, bookmark it so you can uh, easily go back to it. Yeah. There's a, it's, there's a lot of information on that website. Yeah. I've looked through it before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we've had uh, Brandy and I have had Jody Cook on our show, and, and I've been on the show when uh, BMRs had him on. And yeah, very, very good guy, very knowledgeable about all this. Very, very knowledgeable. He's one of the, I'd say, one of the five guys that should be on the Mount Rushmore of dog man. You know, him, next to Linda Godfrey, possibly. I know some people are going to say all oh, this and that. I'm not, like, I won't jump into that. But I'm just saying, overall, what his line of work, what he's done, he was one of the first people like Linda that actually started an organization and that really just dedicated the, that time and that, that website to just mm-hmm. the dog man, not Sasquatch, not Mothman. It's just, hey, dog man. So that's what I like about it. I just, why, why I drew me back into it as well was, you know what? Why not be a part of something that acts as a website, you know, a, a field manual, an actual, mm-hmm. like a structure. It's a very, like, organized structure. I just, I really think it's cool. And, you know, Jody's getting back into it more now. Since yeah. he's been da- battling with his health problems, he's getting a lot better now. So yeah. you'll definitely probably see him on more podcasts in the near future. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Okay. Good deal. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I enjoy going out and, and just being out in the woods, you know, and if it's a, you know, be it a deer or Bigfoot or dog man we come across, you know, it's all okay. We're out there looking for all of it. So, <laughs> so when, when people send you reports and stuff, do you actually, do you interview them? Do you talk to them or is it just their, their written report? So if it's a written report, what I'll do is I'll ask if I can share it. And some of the times people just want to say, hey, this is what I've got. I don't want it posted. Out of respect for that eyewitness that's telling me the report, I won't post it. I'll just read it. I actually had a good buddy out here in California that's been investigating uh, a dog man at a ranch. This gentleman saying that this thing's attacked a few of his uh, herd of his cattle. And he's like, I don't, they're not, he didn't kill him, but it did attack one of them. Like, I think I get slashed at it. But he went out there and investigated and he shared a photo with me. And he's like, please do not share this online. And you can see where he blacked out a lot of what this person, I think it was the person's house. But you see the silhouette of what looks like an upright canid. It is just something that's like out of respect. I, I'm not going to share it. You know? right. So, but when I do get certain encounters, if they allow me, I will share it. But it's just it's one of those. Or even with photos, if someone lets me share their photo, I make sure to get photo credit. I won't try to say, "Oh, this is my mm-hmm. photo." I, I believe that everyone yeah. that does share a photo or uh, an encounter deserves to get credit on that. That's what we try to do. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I just try to you know share it and then same with nadp uh when i get an encounter there i'll share it amongst the groups i don't know how many we have all five regional pages of the nadp then we have a usa page which is our main one i try to share that there to where other people can read it Mm -hmm. if they send it to us and we get the approval we definitely archive it is what we're going to start doing but then we just try to you know share it amongst people to try to get the, the not to grow the phenomenon but to try to figure out what is this thing out there is that is it traveling is it migrating or is it just running across the road you know so definitely trying to get a better understanding of what what is this thing right, right. do you feel that that let the the dog man sightings are increasing over the last few years or or what yeah well, so that's the thing is i, I interviewed Vic Cundiff about i'd say four and a half, maybe five months ago. And I asked them that same exact question. And because you see these reports that someone just posted said, oh, this happened five years ago. I don't believe that the encounters are increasing. I believe with technology and platforms like yours and Krista's mm-hmm. and Brandy's and myself, and we're getting, people are feeling more comfortable about coming forward. And then we're able to, you know, catalog it and kind of just, you know, say, oh, even if it was 20 years ago, we're still getting it out there. So I believe that with technology, it's actually been a saving grace. I don't believe that the sightings are increasing it necessarily, but it, the, the information is expanding, the knowledge. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people oh, claim, I mean, you know. I took out a brain fart, but it was, uh, when. what do I do? I will actually interview the person, uh, my co-host Todd and I, what we'll do is we'll kind of vet them out and see if, are they like legit, like telling the truth or are they just looking for five minutes of fame? With 99% yeah. of them have been great interviews. We'll bring them on, we'll have them on for about an hour or so like this on mm-hmm. StreamYard and we'll just ask them certain questions. We've had authors on, 
dog and I witnesses. We had a guy that claimed to even kill a dog and out here in the Sierra Nevada mountains. So wow. Yeah, it's pretty so yeah, it, we 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 definitely try to do our part in the dog and phenomenon by cataloging it, archiving it, and actually doing the interviews behind a you know screen. Wow. Yeah. Now you just mentioned that somebody claimed to have killed it. Have you talked to that person yet? Uh, yes, we actually interviewed him. His name's Mark Fluhardy. Uh, he had a book. My buddy, my co-host Todd, actually had his book and told me about him. And he's like, "Hey, this guy's claiming to kill. He shot and killed one of these things." He had actually his first encounter was out there where you guys are at in Missouri, and he's an old country boy. And he didn't shoot at the thing, but I, I mean, if you want to go check it out, you can either buy his book. I, I don't have it with me right now. It's in my library actually right now, but. Uh, he claimed to have shot one out here while he was cowboying out in the Sierra Mountain Range up in Northern California. So, wow. I mean, we interviewed him. He seemed 100% legit to me. I cannot tell that the guy was lying. I read his book from front to back, and it seems like he's just telling what he'd seen in his life and what he, how he shot it. He tells you the rounds he shot it with. If you want to check out the interview, we actually have it uh, – on our Facebook, or, or not Facebook, but our YouTube channel. And then I know Michael John with the paranormal voice, uh, he did an interview with him as well. So, yeah. He's a and that's, that's a, a good channel too. I really like them. Yeah. Michael and Dell are awesome guys <laughs> up in Canada. Yep, they are. Yeah. Justin had another question Does the accessibility of technology and social media give in to the rise of false encounters? I, I do believe that, Justin. I do believe because for every great thing you might think, there's always going to be a negative to it. I think the way that it kind of yeah. almost balances out. I would say, honestly, if you're only reading the encounter that's being posted, you kind of have to either sift through it and say, is this person telling the truth? It's 50 50. I do believe for every you know three or four encounters that might be false, there's going to be one in there that's actually real. So mm -hmm. I mean, just really having to learn how to vet it out or just you know take it. I don't believe everything I read, to be honest with you. There are certain YouTube channels that have increased the creepy pasta, which gives us more of a false narrative of this. When you hear that the dog man ripped into someone's car and then dragged them out and ate their head. I mean, it's just, and it's creepy, so creepy pasta. I think it does more harm to our our, yeah. our community to get the right answers out. Because I understand people want to listen to that creepy, you know, dog man, werewolf story, sitting by a fire or something, just because that's what they like to listen to. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that that's yeah. cool, but I think that they, they need to be more forthgoing and say, hey, this is a fake creepy pasta, instead of trying to fluke the idea that this really happened, you know? So it's one of those, I do believe, though, it does give a rise of false encounters, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and you know, I think it's just some people looking for their 10 seconds of fame or, or whatever. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I, I have a hard time believing somebody until I can actually physically talk mm -hmm. to them and, you know, understand or hear them. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you could, you could tell when people are mm -hmm. lying and stuff. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you look at, uh, I'm not in the line of work yet, but in law enforcement, I mean, if you interview Nick Valenti, I know Chris is friends with Nick, but Nick mm -hmm. will, like, he says he likes to get him behind the screen because, you know, he's former law enforcement. He can tell you just by how someone's acting, if they're looking down or not looking at you straight in the face, but, mm -hmm. or when they're telling them the truth or if they're lying, when they're telling the truth and you hear the trim, tremble in their voice where they start stuttering a little bit and just start shaking a little bit, it's like, how could that person be lying? But then they can also be really good con artists too, so. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. There's that. Yeah. Yep. So Glenn had one. There's a truck driver in Michigan who was supposed to have killed one then later was harassed by the feds. That's Joe Barger. Mm -hmm. Joe Barger, yep. Yep. I, was he on somebody's show one time? I he's thought I saw on, that. He's show. been on Bart's show, and I think Matt Imch had him as well. Yeah, I remember seeing that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think Josh Nokio actually shared it on his show. But yeah, I think he, I think he did too. Yeah. 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 So it's out there. So anyone mm -hmm. that, you know skeptic about oh, can these things be killed? I mean, I, Joe doesn't seem like he's looking for five minutes of fame. I don't think that at all. He, you see, you hear, you hear the his voice, and it's just he's like an old school country yeah. boy. You know, just I'm driving, and he pulled out his gun and shot this thing right in the eye. Yeah. And if you listen to the counter, I mean, it's. One of the, I'd say, top five, one of the best encounters. I, it's that's just how I like when I interviewed Mark Fluhardy. The guy killed the dog and was, tells you what he caliber around, what type of gun he shot it with, and everything. And it's just, it, it doesn't it seem like he's lying at all. He's a former veteran, so of course I believe he's a good shot, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think right. like, you just can't 
certainly be killed if you hit him in the right uh, right location. I don't these here encounters where people say, oh, I shot it and the bullet bounced off his chest. Well, the physical anatomy of what these alleged dogmen have are that their chests are like armor. So, I mean, to penetrate their chest, it's probably going to be impossible unless you shoot them with a 50 cal, maybe, but who carries around a 50 cal? You know? <laughs> I believe that, you know, if like you look at Joe Barger's and then I believe uh, Mark Flumardi, I forgot exactly where he shot. I think it was up in the face. That's more of your soft tissue location. Mm -hmm. So, of course, your brain's right back here. So, like with Joe Barger's, yeah. the bullet went through the eye and right through and it dropped the thing. So, but then you hear people say they have unloaded their magazine like nine, ten rounds into these things, and they hit them in the chest, and then just looks at them. Oh yeah, it's bleeding, but mm -hmm. you didn't hit any vital organ because it's so right. You know, pet, like the muscle is just so thick right in that location. Mm -hmm. And you know, and here's the thing too: all these people they have absolutely nothing to gain, not one thing, but everything to lose. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you on that. Like you said, Joe Barger's not he was harassed, and it's like. Martin Groves came out mm -hmm. with it. What did he have to gain from it? Same thing with Mark Fluharty. He wrote a book and just said, hey, this is what happened. And, you know, these individuals that say they ran into these things or shot and killed them. I mean, I, like you said, you guys check out the interviews and you're new in the you know comment section and new to the dog game phenomenon. Definitely mm -hmm. go check those. those that'll tell you. There's, yeah. there's something out there that goes bump in the night other than Sasquatch. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I was always told as a kid, you know, like that the the woods were safe, you know, that's you know, all the all the all the bad things will happen in the cities. Well <laughs> no, that's not so true. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I think with what uh the four one one with Paul, uh David Pilates, I think he did a really good thing with the four one one and just, just put that information out there. So it's like you said, Oh, I'm gonna go on a lovely hike. Well it's like maybe check out the area. Look <laughs> at you know, if you're going along the Appalachian Trail, I mean, check it out before as what certain section. I know it's what twenty two hundred miles long, but I mean if you're only in a certain section of it, maybe do your research before just going out there because these things are out there and people mm -hmm. do go missing. And then, yeah, you gotta think that they've been on you know, any type of narcotic or were they, was it a, a serial killer or something? Yeah, we got to think of that too. But these cryptids live along the, the trails as like it's a highway for them too because the food sources travel up yeah. down those trails as well. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, we used to go camping in the, the Smokies and the Rockies mm -hmm. and we would hike all those trails. And I never once thought about Dogman, Bigfoot, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I was always worried about grizzlies and, and black bears yeah. coming to get you. But, you mm -hmm. know. That was when I was a long, long, long time ago when I was a kid. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you still got to look out for those animals, too. You know, your mountain right. lions, your bears. Mm -hmm. That's why I always recommend carrying a firearm. A firearm might not do you any good to a dogman or a Sasquatch. You're more likely going to piss it off. And, you know, but it's good to carry with you or even bear spray. If you don't believe in carrying a firearm or if your state doesn't allow you to, then, yeah, definitely the next line at bear bangers. Or, you know, bear spray probably be your second best defense, you know, against these predatorial animals. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Here okay. is. Go ahead, Chris. What? That's a North American Dogman Project. I think I, I actually shared a West Coast Dogman, too. Did you get that link? Yeah, I got that on there. Oh, no, wait. No, I got. Uh... I did West. Here, I'll throw West Coast back on there, too. Okay, that was Josh's. Channel, let's. Oop. Here's West Coast. Get to the, you got it. Yep, I shared it earlier too. Yep, it's on there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there it is. Okay. You should get some new subscribers. I hope you do. Yeah, I appreciate it. And like I said, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm not really in this. It's more of a hobby to me. I, I don't. If, if I had, you know, five people listening, or if I had, you know, five hundred people. That's us. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not going to stop me from doing what like that. I, I like to try to put out content like the same thing. I'm, I want to interview this one individual, for example, and it's like, hey, let's why not bring him on and let other people that are maybe intrigued, and then they can judge for themselves if that person was telling the truth. You know, was yeah. that a really did that really happen? I mean, that you only take someone for their face value, and that, that you know that's the best way. Unless you're physically in front of them with the camera, right? You know, best way i think you can actually interview someone and then like you said new subscribers or even new people to the phenomenon that are intrigued mm -hmm. with it just like myself i was a skeptic yeah. if you get your skeptic into a believer i think at the end of the day you did something good you know? yeah yep i'm i'm with you i am 100 with you 
Um, we have the we have his uh, YouTube channel in the chat, and I also have it in the show notes, I believe, on uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if anyone's ever wants to reach out or try to join yeah. NADP or just West Coast, you can just go on Facebook and then type in West Coast Crypto Project or something, and guarantee West Coast Sasquatch or one of the five or six are going to pop up. But really, the only ones that were really active are the UFO, the Sasquatch, and the Dogna page. Mm -hmm. Dogna is where I'm mainly at 99% of the time. <laughs> so. Yep. So you you were saying you were on a hiatus. You you just you know, you and your wife just had a baby. Um, end of the year, and congratulations by the way. And uh, <laughs> your son just had a birthday yesterday. So yes. What's what's next for you? When are you uh, coming out of a hiatus? And uh, what's going on? Actually, I came out on a hiatus uh, when you Paul reached out to me just <laughs> to give you my information, and mm -hmm. I was like, hey, let's get. Uh, I'm ready. I told my wife roughly April May is when I'm gonna try to slowly get back into it. And then I went on Krista's, or was it two days ago? And then mm -hmm. here back into it. I don't plan. On, I don't have any other plans to actually go live or on anyone's show. If they reach out, hey, I'd be more than happy to talk dogmen or cryptids. Yeah, but we're actually coming. I'd say towards the end of the month is when we're actually going to get back out in the field and start oh. doing some research. I have a couple buddies in Southern California. They're going to drive up, and we're going to go check out uh, another cryptid. I don't know if it's a dogman or if it's a Sasquatch, but it's called the Watts Valley Wolfing, and it, if you have to look it up, I don't know what it is. It sounds like almost like a Dudley, but it almost sounds like it could be a dogman. So the oh, only wow. way I feel like get evidence or to actually go see is by doing boots on the ground and going look, looking at you know evidence. Is this thing real or is it was it a misidentified you know coyote or something? So it's just mm -hmm. just the, the stories. I mean, it sounds like a funny name, a, a wolf ape. But the thing that really intrigued me the most was with, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Ansel Adams. Ansel Adams was a famous photographer back in like the 40s and 50s with the black and white scenic photos of the Yosemite. But mm -hmm. he literally had a run in with these things. And I think they terrorized him so bad he was hiding in his tent. But it, it didn't attack him or kill him. So it makes you kind of think did it happen? I mean, he's probably the one guy that you can say was credible. I mean, you can't believe that everything you hear. I get that. But it's just. You Google it back in the day that this one room schoolhouse was actually terrorized by these things and where the teacher hid the kids. I think it was in the closet. Um, you can check out this encounter. Josh Minocchio actually covered the wolf ape very well. Uh, but yeah, that's what, that's what we're going to try to do at the end of this month. And then my co-host, Todd Metz, actually booked a few guys uh, to actually interview. And I know Chris has interviewed Jay. Uh, I'm not going to butcher Jay's name. Jay the Chochin. <laughs> <laughs> the yes, there we go. So, David Jochen is actually going to be our first guest. I believe we're going to have back. Uh, I believe it's the middle of May or early May. I have to look at my calendar, but and then we're going to have uh, Jay on Eric Mintel. He actually had you know corn out there in Wisconsin, out out corn, uh, Wisconsin. So we're going to try to bring him back on too. And then I believe we're going to. Uh, I think I have Aaron Geese with Small Town Monsters back. Talk about his new book that's going to be released this nice. uh, later this month on the LBL and the dog name connection with that. So mm -hmm. I really think cool. to have that. And then we'll be going on another hiatus for a little break because I'm in the process of switching career fields and I'm going to be out for like six to eight weeks going into law enforcement. So I, I told Todd, you know, I'll get him in the reins if he wants to continue on. But he's like, he agreed. We'll just take a little break and we'll do an interview here and there when we can. So Sure. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good things coming up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you're going to be busy. Yeah, definitely busy. I'm mean, trying to balance, you know, your work life, your your hobbies, and you know, cryptids. I believe that there's enough time. I I look at Chris and Brandy how they do it. They do podcasts, work full time jobs, have families. You know, it, there's time to be able to balance mm -hmm. it. You know, so it's just getting back into it. It was nice to have a little break, but. I'll be honest, I missed it. I was like listening to more and more encounters and starting to map out different ideas, coming up with different ideas and different theories. I, yeah. I posted on the Dogman dog man page the other day was the leg structures of these creatures. You hear reports of them having the hominid leg structure or the digitigrade leg structure. 90% of the encounters, it sounds like they see the digitigrade leg structure, but then some of the more modern, I guess you could say, reports are the hominid leg structure. It's just... I, what is it? Are there dog in different species? Are there different type or are these things, the ones with the hominid leg structure is actually werewolves. If you believe in the lycanthropy aspect to this phenomenon, you know, I do believe dark magic. I do believe shape shifting. Uh, it's definitely something that happens. 
though I'm thinking one theory before we jump down a different rabbit hole was that I believe that the dogmen have the degenerative like structures and the longer tails when you read these or these reports. But then I do believe, you know, it's the idea of being able to transform into something physically. I don't think you can do that, but with dark magic or something like a skinwalker almost, you know, mm-hmm. you become that dog, that werewolf, but you have more of the human leg structure. I, I can say it's something up for debate. Do I totally believe it? I, no, but at the same time, I do keep that open door to that theory saying, hey, it's possible because you hear right. like, where people had a straight leg. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and, and you know that that goes beyond just this. I mean, it, it, keep an open mind about things, and you never know what could be true. You know, maybe, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe all this is, is just one hundred percent true, and you know, we're not alone right. here. Yeah, you know, just like with the Sasquatch. I mean, I think we have more physical evidence of the Sasquatch with mm-hmm. the hair samples, the footprints. Uh, I know Jody has uh, a couple prints that are pretty intriguing that he's shared with, uh, I think it was a, a, a network that actually aired, you know, a dog being a little series. And it's like, look at one of the tracks, it looks like a bear track. But this one was pretty compelling looking. So, I mean, I do believe you have some physical evidence. If you go check out Lee Hample's farm up there in Elkhorn, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going off there left and right. When I interviewed Eric Nintel last, late last year, we actually caught, we shared a 30 second clipping of what you hear is a howl. And I don't know if there's wolves in Wisconsin. I'm not too familiar with the area, but they definitely caught some audio of uh, something howling. <laughs> so definitely recommend checking that out. Wow. Did you happen to see uh, Barton Nunley's uh, or hear Barton Nunley's um, encounter, the howling that he recorded? No, actually I actually haven't. I, I've been on a kind of a little hiatus. Oh, yeah. Recently. It was what, a couple weeks ago? It was uh, the. We were all at the LBL. We all left, and he and Martin Groves and I think Daryl Denton and Ron Moorhead, they stayed, and um, they got some – Bart got some pretty good uh, uh, footage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is on in humanoids. Go back and listen to it. He's, he's got a, a video he put out about it, and you'll hear him do the, do the death call, and then it's right after you hear it. Because I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Check it out. It's good. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Paul. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> no. I'm I'm listening. I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. Really- oh wait, <laughs> he can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want me to try to switch over the audio, or am I? In- I no, like my stream's doing okay. Do you want me to try that? Well, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let me just set my phone down. Oh. Okay, is this better? Okay, is this better? I think I think you still lagged a little bit. Am I still lag? Okay. Yeah, still a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. My my arm, my left arm is going to be a lot bigger than my right arm tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem no problem i i haven't worked out yet today so this is it we're giving you a workout yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know we're we're all well, i don't know what it is about tonight we're all having brain farts left and right um <laughs> well for you and i it's probably age for shane uh, yeah that's true <laughs> 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 and, and, and for Shane, it's it's the new baby. I'm definite. I'm yeah, sure of that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. No, I think you're doing a, a great thing, Shane. I really do. And uh, you know, I think you're going to go far in this field. And same with you, Krista Paul. I believe what you guys are doing is phenomenal work, Krista. Like I said, how you balance. You know, your family with podcasting and going out and doing research, it's you definitely are, you know, a staple to that and going out and being able to do that and still balance at all. I, I think that's awesome what you guys do over at Bond the Booth. And Paul, what you're doing too, I, I, I think everything you guys are doing is just awesome. And I, I, I hope to go far in this field just to be able to share what I'm able to find along the way. Like I say, I'm not, you know, in a, like I said, there's only, even if you could monetize this, I believe the only way to monetize a cryptid is by 
making creepy pasta and fake, you know, encounters up just to get the yeah. ship and stuff like that, you know. But at the same time, it's just like I just want to share what physical evidence I come across, whether it be a photo or a print, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I want to try to hopefully in, in my cryptid research, I you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and and really it's all about just bringing bringing information to people and, and letting them make their own decisions on, on what's exactly. true and what's not. I mean, and that's what I try to do with balancing with the NADP and with West coast, like West coast is like my, like my baby, you know, of course I'm going to treat it like that, you know, like whatever I yeah. find, I share that, but also still try to balance the NADP pages and try to share the information there. Cause a lot of people don't know what West coast dogman project is or never heard of it. Mm -hmm. NADP is, you know, you type in dog man, it's going to pop up on the, the top three links on there. So that's it, trying to help Jody out to you. And then yeah. just sharing the information. Do you believe it or not? Well, this is what I what was told to us, you know, mm -hmm. you be the critic. And, you know, quite honestly, before I started doing this, you know, I, I knew about ghosts and UFOs and Bigfoot and stuff. But, you know, you, uh, until you start talking to people mm -hmm. and, and researching it, you don't know what the the mothman is or our dog man is or whatever i mean it's it's all about you know getting information out and and learning about things exactly mm -hmm. I, and i'd say within just a year of being in the cryptic community i learned so much and i, I think it's just, it can also be my type of personality i just absorb everything and all what i hear you know and i kind of filter out what is bs and what isn't but you learn so much and you meet so many incredible people in these fields and it's just like like you said whether it's ufo cryptids but it it, it, it almost they almost work together in a way mm -hmm. i know there's certain groups out there that say oh no we're in the flesh and blood camp and then it's like oh no that can't the woo factor can't be a part of the bigfoot you know it's certain things like that yeah you're gonna run into that but i'd say like 90 to 95 percent of the crypto community and the paranormal community are understanding of each other and i believe they do mesh pretty well yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> I'm Sorry. with you, Justin. Yeah. I hear you. Mysteries of the Unexplained is what got him into it many, many moons ago. Good heavens, I hate being old. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah. It happens to everybody. It yeah, happens it's, to everybody. It's funny today, totally off topic, but my son today, I uh, I went over, stopped in at his house, and he did a, a 5K run today, and then he was cleaning out his garage, and he's like, you know, he said, I kind of feel it in my ankles, and he's 31, <laughs> right? I told myself, well, wait until you get my age. It just gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> He said, because he, he likes to run and do things like that. And he said, well, that's when people your age start riding bikes and get out, you know, stop running. I'm like, well, thanks. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, Shane, I, one, one piece of advice for you with, with the, well, the 12 year old and, the, and now the newborn. Um, so I get, again, off topic. So when my son was younger, I used to run a lot and everything to do marathons and half marathons and all that stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys know what, um, sky zone is a trampoline park uh, my son wanted to go there with a friend one time and i had the opportunity to either go there or take a nap always take the nap i i went there and i jumped on the trampoline for a half an hour blew out my knee never ran after that yeah yeah just yeah. stay away from it stay away from it i should have taken yeah. a nap. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was mad at me for a week. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's another uh, rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, that's funny. Shane, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show tonight. Um, you know, sure. best of luck to everything that you have going on in both you know your life, your new job, the family, and and the uh, West Coast Dogman, and all all those adventures. Thank you all for having me on tonight, Krista, as well. Thank you for having me on the other night. Like I said, you guys are friends, and you're welcome. I'd love to have you guys on my podcast in the near future as well, and we can talk Dogman or if you have any interesting guests. I'd love to, you know, maybe pick their brains a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, sure. I'd love to meet it again. You guys, yep, so, holler at us. What was that? I said, just holler at us. Oh, yeah. Definitely, for sure. I definitely will. And like I said, oh. I was telling Krista the other night and Josh and Brandy, it doesn't feel like an interview at all. It sounds like, you know, with three friends just shooting. Yeah, exactly. 
yeah, just shooting a topic that we we're all interested in or mm -hmm. to learn about, you know. So yeah, I yeah. appreciate you having me on. And, and that's what I like about this so far. That you know, everybody that that I've talked to, it's the same thing. I mean, we're not. It's not an interview or anything. It's it's more just a, a conversation and having and having fun and, and getting to know people and getting to know great people. So yep, yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Paul left arm's gonna be so swell. Yeah, you're right, Justin. <laughs> up down up down. <laughs> I'm trying to read, and you know I don't know. Okay, so. <laughs> So, all right, Shane. Thank you so much for for joining us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. It's early afternoon or late afternoon out by you. So, um, hey, you're awesome. appreciate. You're me on, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. All right, no problem. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Everybody, have a great night. We will see you. And uh, be careful. Don't look directly into the uh, eclipse. And be careful right. with the eclipse. On I keep thinking it's today's Sunday, but uh, it's uh, Monday. So. Yep. Everybody have a great night. Uh, be safe out there and we will talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate yeah. you all watching. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.